So I made another video. Surprise, surprise. Um, I made a Mono Machine video because I really wanted to. Uh, I really like the Mono Machine and I felt like it doesn't really get much love. Um, like people don't either like it or don't understand it or just don't know much about anything about it. Uh, so I thought like on YouTube there just doesn't seem to be many videos about it. Um, so I thought I'd do like a fairly in-depth review. Not really review, just a rundown of how I like to use it, uh, what I like to do with it, the sort of machines within it that I like to fuck around with. Um, it's a really cool machine. It's very digital. I love the digital nature of it. So, yeah, made like a 45 minute video just making a track just on the on the modern machine. Um, I think it turned out pretty well. Uh, the track itself is, it's okay. But like I had no plans going and I had nothing pre-prepared. It was all just a blank, blank slate and I fucked around with it on the fly. Uh, hopefully you like that. Um, but anyway, enjoy. Okay, so <clears throat> I've been wanting to do this for a while. Just sit down with the mono machine and nothing else and just sort of make one, just make a track, I guess, just using this. And uh, talk my talk my way through it, tell people what I'm doing. Because um, I think this machine is super interesting. Like, got so many different synthesis types and they're all a bit odd, a bit esoteric. Um, some more than others. But you can just get some really dreamy sounds out of it. And it's also got a sort of fairly simplistic drum machine on board as well. So you can get, you know, you can do a whole track just on this one machine. I'm sure a lot of people know this stuff. It's not like I'm fucking saying anything you've not heard before. But uh, but I'm going to walk my, walk you through how I do it. What I like to do. So each of these tracks, this is a blank kit, blank pattern. Just got the... Uh, sine wave on each of them. Um, so I'm just going to launch into it. I, I literally have no plans. Um, I'm just going to start and see what happens. So let's go to edit in kits. God, which one should I pick? I, I quite like messing around with the FM machine, so I might start might start with a simple, or well, maybe a parallel one. Because you've got these three types and they sort of go from quite basic to progressively weirder. I guess just with the number of operators that they've got on board. Um, so... So I'm just gonna put in a few tricks just to get myself started. So one thing that's important to note about the mono machine is the gain staging. Uh, every single track, uh, when in its default mode, the volume is set to zero, or not zero, but like uh, 12 o'clock, and same with the distortion. So the way the distortion and the volume interact with each other is kind of interesting. Um, I usually, with, when I start working on a track, I, uh, or on a single track, I mean, I pretty much always turn the volume up. So, usually get it to about there. If you do it further, it, it actually does drive the signal a little bit. Like it's not just turning the volume up, you're also driving it slightly, but then the distortion also drives it, but in a really digital way. But one interesting trick you can do is turn the volume right up to give yourself you know, a lot more volume, obviously, but then if it gets distorted over here, you can turn the distortion down and it sort of removes some of the drive while like maintaining some of the volume so just these, the way they interact is kind of interesting and something to be aware of when you're using it so anyway, I'm going to turn it down slightly and go back to the synthesis page so what have we got here? that actually just as it is. I might mess around with some more things just to see what happens. No, I think I like that right in the middle there. I'm not gonna mess with I mean I can I can show you just actually that's pretty nice. There's a lot of sweet spots in there. actually 
I do is just do some some parameter locks. So I'm going to set this to 25. The way the, uh, also the ADS are on envelope on this, if you can even call it ADS, uh, it's more of an attack. I guess the hold is sort of a sustain, but just the envelope in general is pretty weird. Um, you can get a lot of mileage in terms of release and sustain by just messing with the decay. So. so I might actually do some more parameter locks here. machine is that I literally turn this off every single time on every single track ever. If I go to the kit and I go to assign the key um, key tracking <clears throat> with the filter, I turn it off every single fucking time. And the reason is, I'll show you, is if I play this now, I turn the, the width now, or the low pass, nothing seems to really be happening, right? <clears throat> so you get like, right over here. And the reason for that is I'll leave it there so I can show you. If I turn it off. Like, I'm sure there's a reason why you would use the key tracking. Like, there's obviously a lot of reasons. Maybe you want to have the filter run across the keyboard or something to get, like, some, um, you know, if I turn the resonance right up. You tune the, tune the filter and run it up the keyboard. Like, sure. I get it. But I hardly ever do that. And also, oh, look at that. Listen to that sub. I'll have to do that. So, I might just give it. Uh, actually, no. Just gonna leave it. No filtering. <clears throat> but, one thing I do like to do, I'm just gonna copy this quickly so I don't lose anything. But with the, the uh, EQ, you can get a lot of really crazy filtering sound. Like, it's, it's almost like a second filter. Well, it is a second filter, but like it gets super distorted and crunchy. So I'm just gonna. That's pretty cool. Um, one thing I often like to do is make it so that the parameters slide between each other, because at the moment it's got a bit of a step quality to it. But 
but in this case, I actually like the steps, so I'm just going to leave them. <coughs> so that's an interesting sound to begin with. <coughs> I'm going to move on to something else now. I might actually start, uh, put, a, put a little simple beat in there, just to sort of, or a rhythm of some kind. So I'm going to load up the D-Pro machine and the B-Box, uh, or the B-Box machine of the D-Pro synth, I should say. Uh, so this is the sort of drum machine. This D-Pro machine is like the digital, like, wave, um, wave table synth. Um, and you've got various, like, varieties of it, I suppose. You've got the, the wave one is like a wave table synth, sort of pretty, pretty basic, but it, you can get some nice tones out of it. Uh, this one, shit, what is that one? Let's have a quick look. <clears throat> oh, so this one you get two waves, so you can have, kind of have, like, two oscillators and then it mixes them together. Um, I don't, I haven't actually used this one very much, if I'm honest. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make another track with it in a bit to give you an idea. Um, but then the B, uh, the D Ensemble one is like, um, another, another machine and another one of the synths that I'll come to later, where basically you can have three different, <coughs> you can make chords basically, so you can have one trig, but it, it's got like four extra notes on top of it. You can bring them in, like, get intervals, get some nice chords going. That this uh, this whole idea, along with one of the, because uh, there's another machine that does something really similar with the ensemble sort of style. This is really handy because you can just use one track and you can get really nice, rich chords. I'm not going to use that right now though. Going to use the beatbox. So it just runs them across the keyboard um, <clears throat> and up the octaves as well. it across 64 steps so now it's the same across all and then I'm gonna quickly copy the whole track so that I don't if I don't like what I record in I can just paste it back in and it's like an undo which is a, a helpful thing to do uh, trust me that's a good good tip to to live by with electron stuff um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna live record in some of the re-trigger and the re-trigger timing.
that's really cool. <laughs> I really like that. Okay, so together those two things sound like this. So that sounds pretty cool, but I'm a little bit annoyed at the fact that this track now I think as is like it's like the drums are, are tuned slightly differently so that you're getting some slightly melodic content from the drums. And I think they're just tuned a little bit a little bit out of tune with the, the main melody or the, the main sort of rhythm melody line. So <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna play this. Right? think it needs now is uh, a little bit of a pad. So I'm gonna go to a new track, bring in, I might actually go to the E-Pro again and I might use the Ensemble like I said, um, get some nice pads out of it. So, hmm. Not sure why I can't hear that. I think it's because I'm set to sine wave. There we go. It's also very quiet. This is, again, this is the same thing with all these tracks. You've always got to turn the volume right up. I'm not really sure why. I guess, I guess you could have gain staging after the fact with a mixer and stuff, and if you really wanted some super delicate, non-driven sounds, but that's just kind of not how I roll a lot of the time, so maybe it's for other people and not for me. But, Either way, I'm going to select one of these sounds. Might just stop that. to sort of generally operate these. So I'm just gonna set some trigs on each. I don't always do it like this, but right now I'm gonna do it. Um, so set some trigs, just basic. I think that's gonna be at the root note of the rest of the track. All right, and then I'm gonna as well. Still needs more volume, so I'm going to bring in some distortion. Not that much though. Yeah, just a little bit. Yep. Thank you. 
Uh, again, some of the weird, some of this is some of the weird shit on the mono machine. So you got this delay, and so you bring in the send either in a positive way or in a negative way, and it changes the way the delay works. Although it's often difficult for me to figure out exactly how it changes it, it just does. Listen to that. Versus. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it does. Bring up some feedback. Now, at the, the peak uh, 64 step point, of the feedback. Beyond this, it feedbacks indefinitely. Like, you get complete feedback, so... So, you can use that as a creative tool, though, with the, uh, the two high-pass and low-pass filters for the delay. So if I bring in some infinite delay, the feedback coming in. Keep adding tracks just for funsies. So <clears throat> one more. So you got this S Wave machine, which uh, basically is like your virtual analog stuff. So I'm not going to delve too deeply into that because uh, it's a little boring. Like they sound good, I think. So let's turn the volume up. So you've got a level. Brings in the level of multiple waves, so I think I'm not sure how many, but like sort of a super saw kind of scenario of multiple waves. So that brings them in. You can't really hear them yet until you use the width knob to spread them. Kind of sweet super saw kind of sounds, but also you got all these subs. So uh, that one is so low you can barely even hear it. It is under there.
using the the virtual analog machine though it kind of does show off the filter <laughs> the mono machine I doubt they think about the quality of the filter but I really like the filter on the mono machine it's really it's just super squelchy really wet <clears throat> super digital but also really smooth I don't know it's kind of hard to hard to quantify so this is a machine that I, I don't use very often I gotta say it's the voice voice machine uh, I'm gonna use it now though because it hardly ever gets used and it's a weird machine and you can get some interesting results so I'm just going to chuck in some trigs, I think. So the best thing a lot of the time with electron machines in general, but the fun thing to do is just kind of to hit the auto record and just start just start messing around. So go through consonants, so F sound, kind of a G sound, I guess, H. What I might do with this thing is goes to like right in the middle somewhere, about N probably. Go down to the filter, <coughs> go to the synthesis page. And then change this from the go get it on the consonant one. And then go to a sample and hold. Or random. I'm not sure if that's the best, the best sound, but... something amazing I just wanted to quickly show you something so I'm just gonna pause the video there I think maybe start fresh with a new video so my phone doesn't die okay see ya okay back again so we got that nice sound I might actually think uh, with these last two tracks there's a bunch of things we could do there's a million things we could do but I feel like um, it might be a good idea to make the beat 
a little bit more interesting before we continue. So I might just leave the pad running and then bring in the beat. So the beat's cool, but I think I'm going to It's a nice tool. I'm also going to give it more delay. Some delay. I'll change the timing. That's nice. That's way better. Let's go on to a new track, because I'm happy with that. <clears throat> um, so I might just... The SID station I use a lot actually, just because it's really powerful. Like it's super loud. And when I say powerful, I don't mean like it's super complicated and like you can get heaps of sound design out of it. I mean, it's just really loud, <clears throat> really beefy. So it starts with a... Just a triangle wave, which is alright. But I often like to use the pulse wave because the pulse width modulation is real nice. If I go down here and turn the hold up. Pretty nice pulse with. But the other thing you've got is, uh, I mean, there's just a square, a sign, a saw wave as well. I've also got this mod knob, which uh, you've got a ring modulator. Which is pretty cool. But I way prefer the sync sound. Yeah. 
interesting. I actually have never used this feature before, but I've just noticed that I can I can use the key tracking for other po other parameters other than just the filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to the oh, where am I synth page mod source frequency. So. <laughs> cool sound so I might just keep that for the moment and then do some filtering on it and see where we can go. some extra notes to it. And see what I get. Sometimes it's nice, other times you want, you're not wanting it and you've got to, you've got to dial back stuff a bit and make it a bit quieter, which is fine because you can always boost it later, but that's just the way the gain staging works and I actually, I actually do appreciate that that level of detail in the gain staging is there because a lot of synths just don't give a shit about that and it's just like volume is just volume, there's no drive associated with it, uh, driving things into the filter often doesn't do anything depending on, especially on a digital synth, so I really appreciate when a synth does that. It gives you more tones and I also just really like driving filters, it just sounds really cool. So, <laughs> so far we've got a pretty messy menagerie of sounds. <laughs> You know, not exactly my finest work, but uh, I think it demonstrates the possibilities. But on top of that, 
if I were to use this track, if I were to do something with this, I certainly wouldn't, I wouldn't be playing all of these things all at once. It would be a case of like bringing things in, bringing things out, adding new things, you know, give some progression, because that's just how I roll. But, um, but yeah, for the moment, uh, the last thing I'm going to add on this last track is actually an effect. So I'm just going to, well not an effect, I'm actually going to add a compressor. So you got these machines down the bottom, these effects machines. You got um, through, which just allows you to actually use the inputs up here to, you know, affect uh, incoming signal. Uh, we got reverb, chorus, dynamics, which is the compressor, ring mod. Uh, so you know, phaser flanger. You got some good things in here. These are actually fairly good effects. Like the reverb, I think you got to squeeze a little bit to get nice sounds out of it. But generally speaking, I think they're pretty good effects. Uh, so. Oh, hang on. So what I need to do here is change some of the routing. So if I want everything to go through the compressor, I have to set each of these tracks to go through a bus, and then I have to make make it so that that bus is uh, the what inputs to this. So C and D, and then I have to make it so that it doesn't go to the out. It goes to the, or I can make it go to the out. Do a bit of parallel processing if I want. Um, so I might just. I might actually just start with one sound, which is the pad. And I might just compress the pad just to begin with, and just see where, see how that sounds, because the pad is a little bit quiet in the mix, I really want to boost it. So, I'm just going to mute everything else. So right now you hear nothing. And the reason for that is because it's not going out to the main mix anymore, it's going to the bus. And on this track, in order to actually activate everything, uh, I've got to put a trig on the first step, but in addition to putting a trig, I also need to make it so that the uh, envelope is at maximum, it's completely open all the time, otherwise otherwise uh, the effect will, like the, the incoming signal will be affected by the envelope, and so if it was a short envelope, you might just get the first chunk of the signal, and then it will just be nothing. So you've got to turn it to full, and I've got to do that, and when it comes around, I might just stop it, there we go. So now the pad is running into this track, and this track is going to the main mix. So in the synthesis page, we've got the controls for the compressor, and it's all set to nothing at the moment. So I might the mix is set to full. So I'm just going to bring in the game. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty extreme. I don't. I don't really want it to distort like that. So, I'm going to bring in some of the ratio, squash it a bit. That makes a bit of a difference. But I think what will make an even bigger difference will be changing the input. distortions up a bit, so I might actually I might turn that down a bit, because now that I'm boosting it with the compressor, I don't think I need that. So I'm going to go back to the compressor. So this is this one page for the compressor, this is just the synthesis page, but like all the other tracks, I've got an amp page, I've got a filter page, I've got an effects page, I've got an LFO, uh, three LFOs. So I can use an effects track in a very creative way. I can do heaps of things by just rooting stuff through this. I mean, I've got access to another filter right away, so... filtering on this but just to demonstrate um, but I've also got volume control so I can boost it again without adding distortion without adding too much distortion I also might go back to the synthesis page on the compressor and just make the mix just turn the mix about there so now 
you know, we're getting a bit of uh, the original signal as well coming through. I'm also going to turn the volume of the main track up. So that's cool, but what would it sound like? So we got the drums coming through here. What would it sound like if on the drums I sent that also to the compressor? So there you go. <laughs> That's probably enough. Um, thanks for watching. Hey, like, I really like doing these videos, so I hope you enjoy them. Uh, I'll probably do another one, like on the machine drum over here, and probably do some other ones on the Analog 4 and stuff, just to sort of demonstrate. I might even do some other things, like on non-electron stuff. Like I'll probably fuck around with the circuit at some point because I really love the circuit as well, um, and maybe even my other vintage sense, like my digital stuff. So anyway. Thanks for watching. See you later.